I have always been a shy, introverted guy. I'm a doctor by profession and just celebrated my 28th birthday with my best friend. All my friends are married off to gorgeous girls or are dating, and I had never had a girlfriend. I would rather frame this as I never clicked with anybody. I'm looking for a soulmate. I don't believe in flings and dates. I did click with some girls on the dating app. However, when I met them in person, they seemed to not pass my wipe check. They would tell me that I'm too boring or conventional. I personally feel these types of girls are not meant for me. I don't like the cocky attitude. People assume that I'm a gay, but I literally jerked off to women's naked bodies. My aunt has driven me crazy. Each passing day she reminds me that I need to get married. She gets on my nerves to be very blunt about it. Sometimes I urge to smoother her, but I love her. I sincerely feel it. I'm very close to meeting my soulmate. Elliot, what are you doing this evening? Hello, Aunt Sally. I have no plans for today. What is this regarding? What if my friend's son is getting married tonight? I'm invited, and I want to take you along. Literally, why, Auntie? This is your chance to find a girl for yourself. How many times have I told you, Auntie? Nobody's my match. Oh, shut up, you little faggot. You're coming with me, and that is final. I won't be here for long. I'm getting older and closer to death. I want to see you happy. Not the emotional manipulation, auntie. And I am happy with my work, my best friend and you. That is not life, my son. Your mother would be so happy to see you married. Are you again talking about her? Do you know how much it hurts to see you live your life this way? All of your friends are married and have kids now. Can't you do the same? For me, at least. Fine, auntie. I'll go with you. 7 p.m. then. My place. Noted, ma'am. But don't forget you have an appointment for your weekly health checkup tomorrow. You have been following the diet, right? We can't let you have another cardiac arrest. You are so caring, my son. How come you don't have a girlfriend? I'm so grateful to have you in my life. You do things for me that a son would never do for his mother. I'm certain you'll get a good girl. <laughs> sure. I need to run errands for my co-workers. See you later. Be well-dressed and use the perfume I gifted you. You need to pull girls. Funny. I got dressed up in a suit to meet up with my aunt at 7 p.m. In all indifference, I went to the party to keep my aunt's promise. We reached our destination around 8 p.m. And how to begin with? There were so many people, expensively dressed and giggling around. It made me feel like people were laughing at my incapabilities to build a home. I even overheard a conversation between two people, and I was the topic of discussion. I felt uncomfortable to such an extent that I wanted to leave the venue, until I caught a glance with somebody. A young woman was glancing at me for a while, and when I glanced back, she smiled at me. It was ecstatic to see her smile at me. It is not like I haven't even made girls swoon. I have. But there was something about that girl. She was so charismatic. There was a sense of comfort in her smile, as if she wanted to make me feel safe. I wanted to stay there long, wanted to know her more. But unfortunately, I got a call from hospital and needed to rush. I didn't want to leave the place, her. So before leaving, I walked up to her. I wanted to drop a high, but she seemed too scared to talk. She was panicking, and I realized why. Her husband was watching her. I didn't mean to make it more awkward for her, so I left. It didn't help. Through the night, I only thought of her. I wanted to touch her so badly. My aunt might have noticed that. I was interested in that girl. She sounded a bit happy last night when we were speaking on call. I went to work the other day, and my client was the girl from the previous night. What? I was in shock as well, but I was recommended by her friend. I finally know her name now. She's Tessa. Her name sounds as pretty as her. Am I already in love? No, <laughs> no, I can't be. Hello, Dr. Elliot. Who's this? Tessa, the patient that you checked in the morning. Oh yes, what is this about? Are you alright? The medicines that you gave me made me throw up twice. Is it normal? What? Okay, listen, come to the hospital in the morning. I need to run some tests. I will be fine, right? Don't worry. These are just normal tests. You'll be fine. Thank you, doctor. Good night. You can call me Elliot. Good night.
I am curious about her. What does she do? What are her hobbies? What does she like? Or how long is she married? I want to know everything about her. I searched her Facebook and Instagram on the very first night we met. She seems to love cooking. She barely has any picture with her husband on her social media accounts. This makes me wonder if she has a good relationship with her husband. Honestly, if somebody asks me, I don't like his husband. He came off to me as a possessive and dominating. I wonder how he treats Tessa. I want to meet Tessa right now. It's 2 a.m. in the night. But what do I do with my unquiet mind? Doctor, I've been sitting outside your chamber for a long time now. Are you not coming today? I'm headed towards the hospital. Coming right now. I slept so late. I slept around 4 a.m. Would you believe me if I say I drove to her apartment around 3 a.m. in the morning? No, I didn't stalk her. She provided her address in the medical form she filled up. I just wanted to check if she's alright. Lol, this sounds creepy, I know. I'm totally unlike those stalkers people see on TV. I think I'm truly made for her. What is she doing with her husband? He's a douchebag. Anyway, I hurried to the hospital and the first person I noticed was Tessa. How does she manage to look pretty every day? But wait, something was off about her. She has a bruise around the corner of her lips. Her eyes have sunken inside. What is wrong? I was there outside her apartment. I should have been there before. Her husband might have done that. She looks pale. Her smile has withered away. I tried to crack some lame jokes to cheer her up. She didn't respond. I tried talking it out with her, but she got a call and immediately left. Tessa, is everything right? Yes, doctor. Why? Stop lying. You can't talk to me about it. I could be your unpaid therapist. Your husband did it, right? I don't wish to talk about it. But your husband needs to stop hitting you. For how long has this been going on? Tessa, you're fine around me. Two years now. He doesn't like me hanging around with my friends. He's completely against keeping friendships with other males. And you let him take control over your life? I don't. You won't understand, doctor. Good night. No, Tessa. Don't hang up on me. Listen to me, please. What do you have to say? I need to sleep. It's getting too late. My husband will scream at me for staying up late. That is not a life you should lead, Tessa. Tell me one thing honestly. There was no reply from her side. I waited for an hour. It was in vain. God, I must have done a plunder. She might be misunderstanding me. I only want to see her happy. And her happiness belongs with me. God, I'll treat her so well. She should be with me. He needs to get out of the chapter so I could write a chapter of Tessa and I. But is Tessa thinking that I'm too curious about her life? I mean, we barely talk normally. And suddenly, I asked about her marriage. I shouldn't have. But soon enough, she will understand that I'm the savior in her life. That her husband is a piece of shit. She will soon realize that she belongs with me. The next day, I went to meet her husband, but he didn't know we met. By this, I mean I stalked him. To be honest, I stalk him every day now. By now, I have learned about the places he usually goes during the day. He goes for a jog every night. The road which he takes is usually vacant. This is my golden opportunity to get rid of him. I want him completely gone from Tessa and my life. We are about to start new beginnings and Tessa's husband is literally the hindrance. Well, I can go to any extent to give Tessa the best of the worlds. Now let's talk about Tessa. We've been meeting each other on weekends. But I'm not making it obvious that I have fallen head over heels for her. I want to take it slow. I want her to confess. I want her to grow closer to me. This would even drive away the suspicions over my head. I'm literally playing the most perfect game ever. Elliot? Hey, Tessa. Benjamin died. What are you talking about? How did it all happen? Are you alright? Where are you right now? I'm at home. The police are here. They're investigating at the present moment of time. I'm scared. I don't want to be involved in this. You know how Benjamin has always tried to ruin my life. He's dead now, but he won't leave me at peace. Oh God, Tessa, how did he die? The police said he was run over by a car. They're asking the neighbors if they saw or heard anything suspicious. I'm deeply saddened. You'll be doing fine, right? I hope so. 
How does it feel to act pretentious? If you ask me, it feels amazing, knowing that you're pretending innocent. But at the same time, you have already been the murderer. I have no guilt of murdering him. He deserved it. He made Tessa's life a living hell. Funny, how murdering him was easier than operating on a surgery. This was literally nobody on the streets. I should literally thank Benjamin's corpse for choosing the vacant street as his death place. I ran my car over his filthy body three to four times. I was so ecstatic when I did that. Wish I could do that again. Another funny thing is the police would never be able to catch hold of me. Because I have an alibi. My personal assistant is my alibi. She'd literally cover for me. She fancies me. Things have become so easy for me. Gosh, I am going to cry. Tessa is all mine now. There is no more Benjamin. The police closed down Benjamin's case as hit and run. Are you working? Can you come over? I'm scared to stay at my own place. It feels like he's still there. Yes, I'm finishing up, coming right up after that. Tessa is falling for me. Tessa literally craves for my presence. This had to happen. He truly belongs with me. I'll keep her so happy. Aunt, I have found my girl. You don't have to worry about me anymore. Are you dating? Oh god, I'm so happy about it. Who is the girl? One of my patients. I will tell you about it all later. I need to go. Bye. I went to her place. Her face lit up with the joy. When she saw me, she came running to hug me. Oh, how good it feels to be surrounded by her warm touch. How the hell could Benjamin ever be so cruel to her? Tessa is literally an angel, and I'm here to protect her. We talked a lot, and there were moments when her hands locked with mine. Everything was going perfect, and I was so close to kissing her. When the doorbell rang, what the hell? Tessa had male friend. I literally thought Benjamin would be the only problem we'd ever come across. This is so annoying. Why again? I had to unwillingly welcome Noah. And Tessa introduced me as her friend? I felt so awkward all the while. I felt that. I was under Noah's suspicion. He glared at me once or twice, and it felt like he knew everything I did. I shouldn't have acted nervous when Noah brought up Benjamin in the conversation. Noah was about to go, but before leaving he brought Tessa to a side and whispered something into her ears. I was so desperate to hear that. What could he say to Tessa? Does he know anything about Benjamin's case? This is driving me crazy. I'm sorry, I didn't know Noah would come. Sorry to make it awkward for you. No, it's fine, chill. What does he do, by the way? Who, Noah? Yes, your friend. He runs a restaurant down by the lane. Oh, great thing. He said he can't move on from Benjamin's case. But didn't the police close down the case since it was a hit and run? Yeah, and I want him to be away from the Benjamin case. I want to move on from Benjamin, and reopening the case would mean reliving the trauma again. He's my high school friend. Benjamin and Noah were in my class. Three of us have been friends for a long time. He knew how cruel Benjamin was to me. I begged him not to reopen the case. I want to be happy and I'm happy with you. I like you, Elliot. I don't know how to react. I literally have mixed feelings at the moment. I'm relieved that they won't reopen the case again. And I'm ecstatic learning that Tessa likes me. But I'm worried. I'm worried about Noah. What if he finds something suspicious about me and tells Tessa about it? I need to get Tessa's phone and check the messages between her and Noah. So the next day when I went to Tessa's place, I acted like the best replacement for Benjamin. I cooked up dinner for her and waited for her to sleep. She told me that she's grateful to have me. Huh. As anybody would honestly. I knew that was the only opportunity to check her phone. I did check her conversations with Noah. There was this one text where Noah warned Tessa to be careful. What the hell did he mean? I don't even know how to deal with this problem at the moment. But why am I acting scared? I can get rid of him as well. I'm a doctor. I can either save lives or take them. Elliot, I will be late to home. You have my key, right? Can you come over and cook pasta for me? You literally cook the best. Of course, I will come back soon. I miss you. I'm not worried about Noah anymore. I will take care of him. And this is my chance. Funny thing, I jotted down Noah's daily routine. I figured that he had been absent from work since last week, 
and he's heavily dependent on alcohol to cope with his friend's death. This means he's supposed to be at home on a Tuesday night, drinking alcohol and mourning his obnoxious friend's death. So typical. This turns my stomach. Do not ask me. I already know where he resides. I searched him up on Facebook, and from there I got the address of the restaurant he owns. I went to his restaurant and asked his employees to give his address since his doctor needs to visit him for his regular checkup. They were kind enough to provide his address without suspecting anything. But what did I find when I went up to his room? His door was open. It's strange. I could sense something was wrong. I went inside. The floor leading to his bedroom was dripping with blood. What the hell has happened to Noah? Came here to get rid of him, but he doesn't seem to be here. And there is blood all around. What is going on? I went inside his bedroom, and to my utter horror, I saw Noah lying on the floor dead. He wasn't breathing. He was stabbed. But who stabbed him? I didn't. The wound looked like a personal grudge to me. Who was it? My mind couldn't process the scene, and that's when I heard a soft chuckle from outside his bedroom. It started growing louder as the footsteps were approaching closer. I'm scared. Who could it be? Is it the killer? Does he want to kill me as well? You don't have to worry about no anymore, baby. I took care of him. This is a voice I'm very familiar with. Tessa? What the hell is Tessa doing here? She's soaked in blood. She's carrying a bloody knife. I glanced at her with fear in my eyes. Noah suspected of you. I could not just let him take you away from me. We belong together. I dealt with him on your behalf. Don't worry, baby. We are finally free. We are soulmates. What the hell?